you can take those back there. Mark, I guess you can take that back there, Monica, where you at. You guys can spread the uh, microphones out. As you're getting ready to do that, we're going to, this clip, tonight we're going to be dealing with the nine gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to start off, and but I want to show this clip because how the Father began to speak to me in reference to this because we can be prepared for the season that we're in. So I need everybody, you know, to be able to shift over because I know Pastor was just standing up here, amen. And so if some of y'all haven't recognized, I already done shift over. So when I'm in this vein, I need you to be able to flow with me, amen. Um, the clip that I'm getting ready to show, we had the opportunity for about two weeks, probably two or three weeks, the Lord was speaking to me in reference to about William Seymour. Those of you who don't know William Seymour in the 19, well, he actually was born in 1870, but he was an African-American man that actually starred the Azusa revival. And so I want to show this clip to you, but the confirmation came because when we went to go visit um, Larry Huck, Larry Huck mentioned his name, and one of the things that he was stating is that the saints that we need to be ready for what God is doing because of the supernatural. And so it was just straight confirmation being in the environment um, at Larry Huck at New Beginnings Ministry that what God had been speaking to me. You know, he had to take me out of this realm and went, went to Texas and just be able to see that what I was hearing, and we'll understand what that is, that's a confirmation when God is bringing she speaks something to you, then you hear it again. That falls of as a confirmation, which is what like prophecy. When God is speaking to you, and then someone, he use someone else to say it to you again. That's prophecy. That's one of the gifts that's on your sheet. You can pass that sheet out um, or down the road to everyone. And so we, I want us to be um, mindful and be ready because one of the other assignments God was speaking to me about is about setting up the the house up for prayer as well as it relates to the community. Because we have talked about how many of those that went with us to Azusa it was Deacon Harris, who are Minister Smith. Yeah, just, yeah, Pastor, yeah, just that. And Minister Smith, and we got to go to the 100 year anniversary, and it was just took over all of California. It was just an a experience to be a part of. And so now the Father is speaking, and we, some of us in this generation, especially young folks in the room, need to have an understanding of when we talk about revival or the spirit of God being poured out and the gifts being manifested in full manifestation, what you're looking for. Amen? And so this here is going to give us an idea so that we can see the, one of the main gifts that came forward out of this time where William Seymour was a gift of speaking in tongues. And that is one of, the, one of the inspirational gifts, and that is the really great move of the Holy Spirit. And really, still right now to this day, the body of Christ still have many people that have not even experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about in, denomination, in, in denominations that don't even accept these gifts. Amen? And so as you can see there on the paper that I passed out to you, one of the things that the Father was saying to me is that in order to see a full manifestation of the gifts, nine gifts of the Spirit, we need to make sure that we'll have and covenanting the nine fruit of the spirits because they are the ones that bring forth when you have those when you're walking in love and meekness it's going to make the other nine gifts and make you be a vessel for god to be able to flow through amen so i want us to go ahead and put the video we can show the video at this time and then we'll get into the teaching tonight i'm probably only going to get to the word of i'll stop with the word of knowledge tonight was born the son of freed slaves in Louisiana. He attended a Houston Bible school, but when the head of the school prayed for the students to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Seymour had to sit outside because he was black. Even though he missed the prayer meeting, he took the message of Pentecost to a small church in Los Angeles. After his first fiery sermon on healing in prayer languages, he was locked out of the church and told not to come back. So Seymour joined a small prayer group at 312 Bonnie Bray Street. As he preached the message there, the fire of the Holy Spirit came down. People spoke in tongues and were healed. 
Over the next few days, huge crowds gathered for interracial services. Many received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, including Seymour himself. In fact, so many were drawn to the powerful meetings, the front porch collapsed under the weight of all the people. So for $50 a month, they rented an old barn on Azusa Street. Services ran constantly for three years, from 1906 to 1909. As people from around the world came to hear Seymour's messages, the modern Pentecostal movement quickly went global. Segregation had kept Seymour from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Houston. But after he received the baptism at the L.A. sermons, Seymour took steps toward yet another kind of church reformation. At the time, neither women nor black people had the right to vote. Segregation was the national norm. But the first directors of Seymour's apostolic faith mission included men and women, both black and white. William J. Seymour's life and his ministry illustrate that we are all God's children, adopted through faith in Jesus Christ. And he showed the world that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are still available to Christians. A different, but he had a little bit more on a little bit more that was on. Could someone turn this light back on? Uh, one of the things that you, I want one of the things the Holy Spirit was speaking through me through here. But if you understand, that was in the 1900 talk about segregation, and and we're still dealing with racism and stuff. But what took place was it did away with that. On one of the other clips that I was reviewing, it talked about, and Pat Robinson even saying, how it broke past the burial lines because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I said, isn't that what we're needing here now? Here we are in 2014, and that was back in 19, oh, back in 1904, 05, 06. And one of the things they said about William Seymour is that he was a man that had, he had so much love he had that was in him that you experienced the power of God. And he would literally pray for like five hours at a time. And so he wouldn't have the people to look at him. But actually, when things weren't going right in the service, the way he can be upstairs, and he would be able to sense by the spirit. And he would, be, he would pray and he would come down in the service. Be, and, and just in the middle of that service, his prayers would just electrify that place. And in one, his wife, who, when they had this um, body on that, that house there, that everybody kept coming because the Spirit of God was so high and moving that the front porch actually caved in. And his wife, who hadn't knew anything about piano, the Spirit of God came on her so heavily that she went to the piano, and even up until the time of her death, and she played the piano because the Spirit of God came upon her. In those atmosphere that... Uh, William Seymour didn't have to even be standing there. They would just be shift because the power of God would just move on individuals where they are prophesied, speak, and, and healings would take place. That in, individuals all throughout Los Angeles will feel the power. And it took place because of prayer. And so one of the things the Father was saying to me, is, and, and even he said, Elijah was just a man like us. And, and I said this. And God was speaking to me about this, me turning 50, which would be three, if that's three-year period. And I noticed, I just picked up in this here clip, it said, you know, um, it said something about three years. But, and it also said Elijah was a man just like us, human, and for three years he prayed there will be no rain. What if we will pray over the next three years that there will be an outpouring of the Spirit of God and be consistent at it? What would happen? And so, so you can understand that this was, a, this was the beginning stage of a great outpouring of those nine gifts. They was at will. And here we are now. We know there's a full manifestation. But what they had that we still need to master in this generation, they did not have to fight with worldliness and carnality. Those were vessels that were hungry and thirsty for God. 
hungry and thirsty for God. And that's why the, the spirit was able to move through them. So on your sheet there where you're looking at it, and there's some, I have an extra microphone out here. Because I really, the father's really pressing me in this area as a prophet of God. And I want to see this transpire. I read many books in my early days on, you know, how individuals, even in outside, because that, as they stated, it left from here and went to other countries, Europe, all over, and Wales and different places, all because of power of prayer and the hunger and thirst. A want to be, a, a, a want to not even understand. And now we have a full understanding. Here it is, almost is a hundred some years later, and the, and the body of Christ is still fighting over the spiritual gifts. Now look here at your paper, and you see there it says the gifts of the Spirit. There are nine there. I want you to visualize this. I want to, I didn't have time. If I had time, I would have had got me some gift boxes. And I want you to actually see this visually with me. That here it is, God says, here are these nine gifts. So vision that I have these nine boxes. And it says the word, one, number one is the word of knowledge. Sometimes you may see the word of wisdom first, depends on what book sometimes you read. Number two is the word of wisdom. Number three is the gift of prophecy. Number four is the gift of faith. Number five is the gift of healing. Number six is the working of miracles. Number seven is the discerning of spirits. Number eight is the different kinds of tongues. And number nine is the interpretation of tongues. Now, I want you to draw a line and break those up into three sections over the word of one, two, and three. I want you to write over the top of that, like, and draw a line through there and break them up. One, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And over that first section, you can probably put, like, a little arrow, however you want to do it on your sheet. This here is called the revelation gifts. Amen. This is how you can, this is how I, the Holy Spirit taught me this years ago. I was able to keep up and be able to memorize this because the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the gift of prophecy are revelation gifts because you can think about they come from what? God. So they're revelation gifts. And then four, five, and six, the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the working of miracles, those are the power gifts you can see that right when jesus walked on the earth he moved in what power he you you seen this work through jesus you know in a lot of the of, of the gospels and then in verse seven eight and nine are you guys following this three component you see that's why numbers are important they're not to be overlooked amen and the number nine means birthing and so seven eight and nine what is that going to be inspirational gifts because they come by the the holy spirit because what the holy spirit the inspirational gifts what the gifts of speaking in tongues discerning of spirits and interpretation of tongues so you have that now remember you look remember you see here these nine gift boxes the one that we're going to spend some time on much later is the one Actually, just think about if I said that you could have nine gifts, would you want nine of them? Two, three, four, five. How many would you want? You would want all nine. But in the body of Christ, still right now to this day, we have individuals, they want to move in prophecy, they want the word of knowledge, they want um, the wisdom gifts, the, they want the healing, the miracles, but we leave out eight and nine all the time. And that was really brought forth the manifestation of the Holy Spirit on the scene when it, when it started pouring his, when God started speak, pouring his spirit out because he needed to get what? Some spirit-filled individuals. Because when you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, that's what? That's a power gift. So it's not you, it's the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left, what did he tell the, tell the disciples? What do you tell the disciples? He says, before he left, he told them what? Don't you move, don't you do anything until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because as long as Jesus was walking the earth, there was no need. He was the Holy Spirit. Do you guys understand that? Remember this Bible study I'm teaching. 
If it's clear, if it's set of money, we need to raise your hand. Because I'm telling you, if you want to flow with what God is doing, and he keeps speaking this 40 years to me, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to be used by God with these nine gifts of the spirits. Amen? So we're going to look at the word of knowledge. And on your paper here, remember the fruit of the spirit. And I think I did this some time ago. Remember I had everyone to grade themselves from an area one being the lowest and ten. And I'm just doing this just as a prophetic gesture. What if for you to use the, have the gift or the word of knowledge, you need to have a great amount of love? What if for the be used in the word of wisdom, you need to have joy? What if you had peace, you obey the prophesy and have prophecy? And then if you had the gift of long suffering, you'll have great faith. And then if your gift of gentleness, the gift of healing will manifest through you. And goodness, the works of miracles. And faith for the discerning of spirits. And meekness for different kinds of tongues. And nine, temperance for the interpretation of tongues. But when you have all of these in your life, the fruit of the spirit, God can utilize you at any time for the gift of the spirit. Amen? So in doing my study time here, I found some stuff, stuff here that I wanted to put together. In addition to the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, the Bible also tells us that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. For the work, it, I want to let you know that the nine fruits of the Spirit are much more important than the nine gifts are. Do we understand that? You cannot jump over to the gifts of the Spirit without having the fruit of the Spirit. Do we understand? Could this be why in the body of Christ we don't see a great manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit because we haven't gotten the fruit of the Spirit down? Amen? As the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit have to do with God imparting part of his divine nature. Get that. God is departing part of his divine nature into the core of our personalities to help make us into a much better and holy people. Do you get that? He get what the God is doing. He is imparting part of his divine nature. That is powerful. God's ultimate aim for all of us is our what? Sanctification in him. Remember I talked about you need to be used as a vessel. And that's why this is a season for the righteousness his sanctification in him, a part of the sanctification process, has to do with the Holy Spirit himself transmitting nine specific divine qualities and attributes into our personalities. Get that. Into your personality. God put over into, that means, um, uh, not Smith Wilkerworth. Yeah, Smith Wilkerworth used to be a, a mean, had a strong spirit of anger. But he got so engulfed with the Holy Spirit that you would never know that he was that man. Because God had literally did what? Had imparted into Smith Wigglesworth this divine qualities and attributes into his personality. You, that's, a, that's something you can pray. You know, you, you can, let's, you, how can you make that a prayer? I just gave you a little nugget. How can you make that a prayer, what I just said? Am I giving a microphone? We have microphones out there. Remember, this is Bible study. Amen. If you, if you messed up, I'll correct it. Go ahead, Sister Kira. I'd say, God, impart yourself into my personality. Amen. And remember, and part of what he wants to do, that's why he wants to walk in sanctification. He wants to give you these what? These are the nine divine qualities and attributes into our personalities. Amen? Who's this, what is this writing over here? This throwing me off. I don't know. Is, this just, is that my technology guy, Justin, doing that from where he's at or what? Is that Mr. Adam back there? Oh, man, he done got the anointing for Justin. Go ahead, boy. You learned that in school? <laughs> 
You're going to want to listen up because when I was doing this study, I found some good examples for children to use about this first gift here. But if the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, I want to, this, this is a good piece here. Think of this. If the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit was a cake, then the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are the icing on the cake. How many of you just like to eat a plain cake? But that's what, you know, the cake is good, but it's better when you got some icing on it. You know, even like you guys seen the pretty cake that was made for Pastor Adam and I, the ice was real thick and it was still good. But the cake, even when I took that top layer off, it still had some icing that had got attached to the cake. Although I want all of the icing, it was still good. But these two together and allow God to work with a believer with both sets of these fruit, the nine fruits and the nine gifts. Say, I want all of this. Listen, you are, so now when you see when God says that you are more than a conqueror, when you get an understanding that all of these gifts you have access to, why are we walking around so defeated? Either because we don't know or because we're not willing to sanctify ourselves so that these gifts of the Spirit can flow through us. And you will have one mighty sanctified soldier of Jesus Christ as the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit will give you some serious heavy ammunition to have at your disposal as you walk with God's anointing in your daily life. I call Pastor Adam, I text Pastor Adam and Deacon Harris, Pastor Adam answered me back because he was like, I said, the, the Lord was showing me, I said, what gun has nine bullets? And Pastor Adam texts me back, a Glock MP7. And so look at, look at Deacon, Deacon Lowe said, yeah, right. So could you imagine, you know, I want to see you imagine yourself and you get to get two of those. Now, that, uh, those some, that's, some, that's some heavy ammunition. I don't know anything about guns. But I just can imagine if I had one, I had one with the fruit of the spirit that had nine rounds in it. And then I had another one that had nine rounds that represent the gifts of the spirit. Oh, my God. You would take out some stuff. You wouldn't even miss. Amen? But look at that. It's still, you was able to, you need some love? Phew. Need some faith? Phew. You know, I run into a devil. I may just need everything. <laughs> All nine, you know? <laughs> I'm getting a little bit too excited. Amen? I don't even own a gun, don't like guns. But when I think of a spiritual weapon, see, that's, you don't need a gun when you're walking in the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. When a individual walked into John Hagee's church and was standing about right here and tried to shoot him, the bullets missed him. Because the man was full with the Holy Spirit and the protection of God and angels were around him. I have even included in the factor about the angels I'm only talking about the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. One, all these that you have control over. Amen? Think of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit as torpedo gifts. As the Holy Spirit can manifest any one of these nine gifts through any believer. So everyone in this room, through any believer, any time that he will want to do so. Say, that's me. I see Mother Crawford, she over there, she thinking. Hmm. And any Christian can get themselves in proper place to receive these nine gifts as the Apostle Paul himself tells us not to be afraid to try and stir up these nine specific gifts of the Lord. It's in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 11. Here is the direct verse from our Bible on the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and we look look over and here it is Paul is speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he says but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit 
another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these, distributing each one individually as he will. You have the, you are a consecrated vessel. You are what God wants you to be in position to be able to receive. Now here it is, Paul. Paul says, "What? Start the gifts. Start these gifts up. Ask for them." Amen. Have I got you stirred up? Did you want your gifts? Amen. Not only does the Bible tell us that these nine gifts of the Spirit are available to all believers, but then it takes it one step further and tells us that we can actually try and stir up these nine gifts up in the Lord. So some of you are probably looking, I was like, how do I go about doing that, prophetess? Some, it may be just as simple as taking some time out spirituing with the Lord. Right now, because we, it, the Bible says, see, in all you're getting, it says get understanding. So some of you right now are getting understanding. You didn't know that you had all these nine gifts. They're not, these are not gifts that's just for the apostles and the prophets. It says to what? What did the scripture say? We got to what the word of God says. What does the word, it says to what? To a prophet to what? To all. If God, one of these nine gifts wanted to be used to be moved on a child, God can do that as well. Amen? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. As such, every believer should go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to release these nine gifts through them any time that he will want to do so. Let God know that you are willing, being a willing vessel for the manifestation of these gifts and that you will give him a full and solid green light to manifest these gifts though you at, through you at any time that he will want to do so. So now you see that you're able to go to the Father and say, Lord, I want to be able to be used by you at any time. And I want to be in position. Isn't that worth walking in holiness and righteousness? I think about well, you don't have to, you know, uh, people, this the body of Christ. You're not going to always have a, yes, we know leaders, you know, apostles and prophets flowing these gifts. You know, it's only because, what well, we don't spend time with God. We don't, we know that we, because first of all, we know that we need them. Because we, we know we're getting arrows shot at us. But you need to know that you're getting arrows shot at you. So let me help you out with this word of knowledge. The first gift I want to talk about is the one I believe will manifest the most in our daily life with the Lord. With, with God having absolute perfect knowledge of all things and with us having knowledge levels that are completely imperfect and limited, this means that we all need to receive words of knowledge from the Lord on a very regular and frequent basis in order to be able to be safely a safe journey through this life. So that's the word of knowledge. Everyone in this room should needs to, and needs to have and be able to receive a word of knowledge at some given point. And you probably have, you just didn't know it. As such, I believe the Holy Spirit will really manifest a specific gift with a lot of frequency in our daily life if you can learn how to work and how to pick up on him when it does come in. He's speaking this all the time, but you're not recognizing. Sometimes you may be thinking, well, is that me? And that's the word of knowledge. Let me get right. You may want to write this down. The word is knowledge is simply the Holy Spirit transmitting his specific knowledge to you on something that you will have no ability or means to be able to know about with your own limited intelligence and knowledge levels. You know, and you're, normally you wouldn't know that. And sometimes you just get this feeling, you just say, that just, you, you, even sometimes you may look at a person, but sometimes the word or not may be mixed with discerning the spirit. But you, the Holy Spirit speaks something to you. 
you just you just get this knowing you don't know that person you don't know that to be the case that's a word of knowledge it is a supernatural knowledge and insight being given directly to you by the holy spirit himself but by your own mind and your own intelligent levels so the father gives you a word of knowledge it may be on the start i'm gonna give some examples here especially i like these now because it has some things that dealt with children these words of knowledge that you can receive direct from the Holy Spirit can literally cover an infinite number of things in your life. They can cover anything from something very trivial, such as where you may have misplaced your car keys. Oh, my God, how many of us need that? And you know that the Holy, the Holy Spirit, and we'll just say the Holy Spirit, there's nothing wrong with us, but I'm just helping you. We'll say, oh, the Holy, because I say, ask the Holy Spirit. And then when he speaks back, you know, I, I just want to look at, I just want to give them bodies. You know, the word of knowledge, if I just say, if he was a spirit, he'd probably say, they ain't even give me no credit. I told him it was over there and left him over there in the sink. You know? So that was what? It was a word of knowledge that the Holy Spirit spoke to you. Amen? To give you life-saving knowledge on how to solve an impeding a crisis or emergency. So here are some examples. Here, I put these, here's some right here. Think about this, how to solve a math problem at school if you are a student. How many children in the room you didn't even think to ask to say, Lord, I, you know, I, I, how do I solve this, this problem? And when the Holy Spirit speaks back to you, that's the word of knowledge. How to solve a specific problem at your workplace of employment. Some of you have had some assignments and things you had to do and you did not know that when you got the answer on how to do it, that was you, it was by through the word of knowledge. Knowledge on what a certain scripture verse may mean and how it can apply to your own personal life. How many of us have, have, have experienced that? How to properly witness to an unsaved family member. And the Lord said, I want you to listen, do it this way, that way. That's the what? And a, a little side about you think about the word of knowledge. This thing is factual. I want you to get it mixed up with the word of wisdom because that goes more with giving you a plan or more future. It's going to be factual because what? When you read a word of wisdom, how, I need to get this problem done. You don't need a word of wisdom because you need to get that problem done right now. Amen. You see the difference? It's immediate. It's fact. You can't wait three months from now. <laughs> I don't need a plan. I got to turn this paper in. Or the teacher going to give me an F. Amen. My boss want this here. He want me to get this here assignment done. Lord, I need you to show me. I don't need a word of wisdom for A, B, C, D. No, I, I need something right now. Amen. Did, I, is, you, did you, I make that clear for you so you can understand? How to solve a marital dispute. How to start up a new business. Where to look for the next new job if you have just been laid off. Instead of us crying and whining and what have you, immediately, Holy Spirit, God, I, I need to hear from you right now. What, where, think about it, where you need to go at. I can remember laying, I didn't know at that time, when I had, the Lord had, I heard in my, I heard in my spirit, the Lord told me to leave my job. I was working at Double Tree Hotel, called Pastor Adams in Bermuda. I says, the Lord told me my time is up. He said, okay. And that's normal. I should know that was God because Pastor Adam said, you don't leave a job unless you have a job. That's his motto. Amen. And so I, and we needed me to work. I, AJ was in daycare and all that stuff. We had card notes and all that stuff. But I just knew I had peace in my spirit and I just knew that I heard the father state that. I was laying on the couch and I was looking for him and looking through the paper and the paper just fell open and there stuck out, it said the full employment council. And so oh, I'm like, oh, okay, I really don't want to, okay, I'll think about going there. So I went to go visit my old job this particular day, put my little suit on, went down there to visit and fellowship with them. You know how you do that when you leave the job, you go back and visit, you know, and some people probably don't want to see you coming, but anyway. <laughs> and as I was leaving back, it, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and say, that place, it's right by where you're leaving at. I walk in there, and I go to field. I say, they say, oh, I say, go there. So I went there. I was going to fill out an application, just leave it. And I sat down, and they say, oh, the vice president wants to see you. 
come on back. I went back in, went and put me, I went back and met with him and everything, and he was showing me this paper, and I left out with this financial aid paper because that's physician. It hadn't even been, he had created this physician, and I, I can look back now, and I said, why did he give me the paper? This is their property. And sure enough, a couple days later, they said, you'll stop working at this particular date. That was a word of knowledge, even though I didn't know anything because at that time, my gifts hadn't came in yet because I started in 1999. But I was a woman of faith, but now I can understand the Holy Spirit was what? Functioning and moving. Any questions? Go ahead, son. We have nine of these, so we're going to go through. I'm going to wrap us up here in a little bit. I was actually just... I was actually just going to say what you just said happened to me today because I was like, man, the weather's bad. I ain't getting ready to go nowhere after I get her on the bus. But something was just like, oh, you don't sit around and wait for nothing, you know, because I have to work. I have to be still doing something. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go on and go over here to where, uh, you know, an associate of mine told me not to go. <laughs> but I went anyway, all the way to Shawnee, Kansas, and as soon as I walked in, filled out the app, went upstairs, saw the person that does the hiring directly, pretty much got hired on the spot, fourteen fifty an hour, you Amen. know, on the weekends, and, and, you know, like thirteen fifty during the week, you know, but it was just like, you know, if I wouldn't have went, if I would have listened to my, my meathead, I wonder what would have happened instead of, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit. You know. And so remember, it's not based off of your intellect. It is what the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. is moving. And, and it's something about when that happens, it's, you know that you, it's just something different. You know it's not you. Amen? And sometimes that word of knowledge, it may come through someone. You know, sometimes you may see when you're in meetings or what happens, somebody speak and say something to you. And, and most of the time, it can be also, be, it can still be what? Confirming. But it can be factual. You know what? Um, someone say, you know what, I see that da -da -da, this is going to take place and happen. That's a fact, factual, that's going to take place. But what we don't want to do is get and saying that the word of knowledge is not directional. That is not, doesn't tell you to tell other people, say, do this, you know, hey, um, you, oh, I hear the Lord told me to get up and, and move and go over to Timbuktu and all that. No. And remember, it's going to still, it's, it's not going to take you out of the will of God. Amen. You know, we got these proper liars and stuff out there. As you can see from these kinds of examples, let me see what I do. The word of knowledge, oh, here's a good one. The word of knowledge that God wants to heal someone of a specific illness. You may see this happen. We see this happen all the time. That the Lord speaks to someone. Even like I remember being on a radio station and say, I hear the Lord. That was a word of knowledge that came to me to speak to someone or to give out to someone. And you may have been used. So, you can, God has, everything back has used you, but you just didn't have a name to put with it. That was the gift of the word of knowledge. As you can see from these kinds of examples, there is literally nothing that the Holy Spirit cannot get into our own personal life where he can then give you a word of knowledge on how to properly handle something that you are currently dealing with. Think about it. I see Jessica, I see your hand. Think about something that you're dealing with or give your word or not to help someone else out with what they have been dealing with on their end. Which our own knowledge, I remember, I'm not saying, um, matter of fact, I just think of this. Um, Kira and I was talking, she had this situation, what have you, and I just, just say, do, do, do such and such and such. That's really what the word of knowledge because in myself, I wouldn't really, you know, have known. I know, I, I know. The, see, the Holy Spirit make you look smart. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you, just like you guys see, and I know because some people say, even Dr. Rush, she says, that, that prophet is angel, she's younger than me, she says, but God. But that's just what the gifts and spending time and covering and knowing that I have a right to them just because I was young didn't mean that I had to wait as a pastor become 60 years old but I can think I can be able to get that only God wants is what a consecrated vessel amen say it's for me 
With your own knowledge levels being so limited, so imperfect, and so incomplete, we all need words of knowledge from the Lord on some kind of regular basis in this life so that we can make it through this life in one piece and get to where we need to go in our divine destinies with him. You mothers that's in the room, you're going to need the word of knowledge. You're going to need, to say, how do I handle this situation with this child? How do I handle this situation? You're going to need to receive a word of knowledge. Amen? How exactly does the Holy Spirit transmit an actual word of knowledge to us? How do you think he does that? I, I gave it to you earlier. I want to see what you're listening. By the Holy Spirit. And somebody said in your thought, it's a, in your inner knowing. What'd you say, son? Yes. It's in your knowing. Um, when people say, and I say this, that's why I tell people to stop saying, I, um, God said, God said, God said. That's a different, I, sometimes I understand, but I don't want you to get trapped in that because there's, you have, a, when you get more developed in the Holy Spirit, there's an inner knowing. You, the Holy Spirit, you know when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and manifests through you. That's in your inner knowing how he speaks. It may sound like it's an inner small voice that speaks, in, speaks through you. Now, I'm talking about you speaking and having a conversation out, you know, all the time and talking about you talking to God. Now, we need to, now, we're going to need to check that. There's something wrong with that. No, we're going to, we don't cross over to entertaining, you know, voices and stuff. Um, matter of fact, I just got a text, Pastor Adam, that this woman, this, this um, woman was trying to tell this other pastor um, that she got this gift. And I, and See how I get information? I'm teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. So when I got this here text, I said, listen, they called me on the wrong day. I, wanted, I said, no, they in error, and hell no. Because that spirit need to go back to, the, to hell because they said that when they, they smell the foul odor, and every time they smell it, then somebody will die. And to my, that's a gift. And they supposed to be a mess. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that is, I said, that is not one of the nine gifts. And I said, they don't even fall upon the gift of the sermon. I said, that is, they're entertaining spirits. Because that's not God. If anything, if God's going to show you something, why he going to send you a smell? And then next thing you know, you just see somebody, somebody die. You see how silly that sounds? And people think, oh, I got a gift. No, even if me being it, when God show us something, you get vision and dreams, you're supposed to be able to pray. That's your power that you'll be able to pray and stop some of that stuff. There's, I could, to, okay, my, my grandmother, Miss Dot, had went to the hospital. And I got a vision in the middle of the night, and I was warm with this demonic spirit over my grandmother, but I was in my grandmother's house. It's very rare that I've had these and I was in my grandmother's house, and this spirit, I knew it was the spirit of death that I was contending with. And, and I was warm with that spirit, and I rebuked it and told him, no, it wasn't going to touch my grandmother. And the next day I called him, and I said, man, um, I said, I had this spirit. I was warm, you know, praying for my, my grandmother. And my aunt told me they sent my grandmother home. And my grandmother literally was at home, and, the, and the, what had to happen the next day, the neighbor came that morning, and they had took her back to the hospital. If I had not, God, did, God, God showed me that vision so that I would be able to, what the enemy wanted to do, he wanted to take my grandmother's life that night where I wouldn't have been there to have any closure in that relationship. Come on. Not for I could be super, I don't need to know what somebody dying or what. That was for, it was a purpose in that. I was able, so when God show us something, you're supposed to be have enough power and authority if you know how to pray right, that God, you can stop that deaf spirit from being able to function. Now, the other vision I had was two years ago. My, now, it was different. But my uncle um, Peter, he was in the hospital. And I had got a vision, and I had remember going to visit him, and, he, and the vision came to, and, the, and that vision says, 
it, it was just really, he was like he talked to me, like he, you know, it was just the way I just seen him, and it was just like, it was a peace, like he was leaving. So the phone rung, like, probably less than three minutes, and I looked at him, and it was his daughter. I said, I already know. I said, because he came to me and said, I f- said a vision of him, and it was like the Lord was taking him on, and sure enough, it was closure. So when the fire, it should always line up. Don't be f- loosey goosey and freaky out there. No, I passed out there. No, I didn't. Get, you know, and, and that's a good point. So and I hope my, the person that called me, I didn't get no foul odor came in the room. I smell death. Oh, tell the room, see that? What I tell you? We just do because what? That's superstition and all that. That's not what we're talking about. You know. <laughs> You know, heck, somebody could be them, have some beans that day. And you, know, you try to act like you got a gift. <laughs> Any questions, we're going to wrap it up. So, come on, just so you understand, you, you got the first the word. Or not. Now, y'all be prepared. I may, be, Pastor and I may call on one of y'all to, do one of, to, to, to preach one of these. Go ahead, Sister Jessica. I think I might know the answer to this, but just to clarify, there's a difference between the the word of knowledge and God speaking to you through a dream is that oh yeah the word of or is no, yeah. that still that's still in the word Nuh-uh, of knowledge dreams is just I wanted to show you don't get loosey goosey you know people okay. trying to make something that's not because the word of knowledge is is factual and the fathers you you know you don't have to be sleep because when you go in, I don't want to go into dreams and vision because Dreams and vision deals with some interpretation. It can have a lot of symbolism in there, and it depends on that dream. That's the reason why you get somebody to interpret, because it may be a word of knowledge in the vision. Okay, so te- this, this is not dealing with any vision or dreams. This is dealing with the Holy Spirit, and that's the good thing about it. Amen. You don't have to be asleep, because you could have had some peace of that night. You could have uh, watched a bad movie. <laughs> you know? The good thing about the word of knowledge is that that Holy Spirit, you can be brushing your teeth. And he says, don't take Paseo this morning. Take truth. And how many times, y'all know y'all done did it. Some told me not to take 435, but I took it anyway. And now you sitting in traffic, cuss, fussing, and want to cuss. God, 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 God. If you would have listened to the Holy Spirit that gave you a word of knowledge, that told you, don't take 435, Take 470. So you see how he's always speaking. I see Chris back there laughing. <laughs> Amen. Listen, my grandmother, Miss Doc, because she was a prophet, she just never got the functions of giving. I would see her sit there and say, Ricky, don't get in the car with that boy. Two hours later, Mom, I'm in jail. He didn't, but, and they would think my grandmother was flowing with a word or not. It was factual. She told him, don't get in the car with that boy. Amen? So y'all teenagers in the room with your mother and, y- and adolescents, 30 and under, because sometimes see like y'all screws don't get in until you're about 30. When they say, don't, I, something ain't right about that person. Listen. So now you need, if somebody tell you, you need to say, um, is that a word of knowledge that you're giving me? And then, could it be a, a, a word of wisdom? I see no, you got almost, I see no good end coming out of that relationship, out of that. Because now they're saying what? I almost see no hope. <laughs> when you're dealing with Holy Spirit, think what you're saying over there. <laughs> see, our ancestors didn't, you know, our ancestors didn't have all, they didn't, they didn't get to get this far. So what they say, they say, I smell a rat. That was a word of knowledge. They ain't no good. Amen. <laughs> you, uh. Um... What? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Twan took, let's think about this. Who, I know Jessica knows the answer to deep. Who knows what the Latin language is? Latin language. What type of language is that? Yes. You know, it's a dead language. Ken Twan signs up for it. 
We tell Kentuan, the first year when he tried to do it with me, I said, Kentuan, don't take Latin. So the next year he went with his dad. Now y'all know Pastor Adam just make Pastor Adam cool. Pastor Adam gonna tell you one time. And you're like, okay, you wanna do it? All right. Now, ask Kentuan probably what his grade is in that class. <laughs> It's a dead letter. <laughs> so Katrina said he should have listened to that word of knowledge. <laughs> and, he, and it says what? And let it be confirmed by the mouth of two or three. I told him. His daddy told him. Jessica told him. And I'm quite sure the Holy Spirit was telling Katrina, boy, don't take that class. Don't take that class or what? He didn't listen. He, he, he just overrode. And, and that's the thing, come on, about the Holy Spirit. Remember, he is a gentleman. He will never force you, and I'm speaking to the camera too, he will never force you to do something you don't want to do. He is a, he's not going to override your will. You want to go ahead and do it after he told you to do it? Go right ahead. See, the devil, this is how the devil worked. The devil, the Holy Spirit said, I need you to go out the door with the exit. You don't do it. They too come back. Go out this door with the exit. Now the enemy does it this way. Go to the door, out the door with the exit. But you don't do it. Go out this door here with the star on it. You don't do it. Oh, go to the door around the corner. That's how Satan moves. Think about it. When sometimes, and this is, this is why the comfort of the Holy Spirit, I love him. When you have a relationship with him, and he knows our lives get busy, and we got children and all this stuff, he come back so gently. You know how many times, and I'll say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're right. I was supposed to be doing that. Yesterday, I got tied up coming from, I think I was coming from the radio station. And the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Psalm 103. So I had put it in my phone, but my telephone rung, and I was in the car, so I left the car, and I got... You know, passed out of town, so I had a, you know, a real productive day. But this morning, when I, my eyes popped open. I went to go to my phone. I went to the Bible app. Guess what popped open? Psalms 103 started playing. He, that's what he wanted me to read, Psalms 103. He made sure. And I had never, ever had that happen to me. A whole day had went by when it stayed right there. I had been in my Bible app, and here it comes. Because he, the Holy Spirit, when you have an intimate relationship with him, he is concerned about your well-being. So you just put yourself in proper position so that you can work and he can flow. He just need a vessel to flow through. That's how easy it is. Don't be hard-headed. Don't be a knucklehead. You don't know nothing anyway. As soon as you realize and say, you know what, I know nothing. I can do nothing without God. When you sell it that you get to that point, he would just use you because I'm like, I can do nothing without God. But you know what? He'll make you look so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just had a, a, a one over these years. It's like, God, you know, you see, sometimes just get one of them good Holy Ghost moments where you just, we've been crying, God, I can do nothing without you. There's nobody but you, God. Just, and when you get that thing settled and you come out of that and you got that revelation of that, and oh, you can begin to praise and thank God. Oh, that's how good God is. When I look back over my life and see all that God has brought me through, you can't help but give him praise. You can't help but thank him. You can't help but serve him. You can't help but rise up every morning. You can't help it. Because your life is not your own. But only those that are still trying to hold on to their lives. They're never experienced that intimate relationship with God. Because you're still trying to hold on to something that is not even yours. Your life is not even yours. Your children are not even yours. God just gave them to you so you can rear them up and teach them about him and raise them up under the ammunition of the Lord. And when you have understanding of that, so when God takes them back to go back home, you don't get all broke down, twisted about it. 
You say, thank you, Jesus. I did the best that I knew how while I had them. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. He's no it. He's the third person of the triune God. This is his dispensation. Nothing gets done except it come through him. God had his time in the Old Testament. Jesus had his time when he walked on earth. And he says, when I go back to the Father, I leave one that is here called the Holy Spirit. What is that, Deke? I like the way Deke said, the Ruach Kadash. <sighs> Don't you feel him right now? See, I feel him right now. Come on, let's just worship him. Let us let swell in our presence in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for giving us all wisdom and now. We thank you for your gifts of the Spirit in the name of Jesus, Father. We magnify your name. And the robo coranderi and the lady did a macheta la la bacheta. And the robo shela la man, the lady did a bow, ramba sheka rababa. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Adam, thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone under the sound of my voice that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? That do not and want to experience this Holy Spirit the way that I have spoke about him. On today, not just religion, but intimate relationship with him. We want more of you, God, and less of us. More of you. Father, ignite. Ignite us that we will be able to recognize when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Do something in each and every individual under the sound of my voice, Father, that we will be in tune to the Holy Spirit. We will be in tune with your speaking, whether it be through a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, whether you want to use us in, in the realm of faith or healing or deliverance, the working of miracles. We thank you, Father. And Father, and those that are needing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, put them in position. Let them know that this is a gift. <laughs> Listen, I don't see y'all see that was a real quick word of knowledge. I had my eyes closed and I stepped this lady and said, get back. And I opened up my eyes and I realized that I would have fell down those steps. <laughs> Pastor, how do you want to look it out for me? Amen. I would have asked her if you were all right. And she would have said, I'm all right. Then I said, then I start laughing. <laughs> I would have picked her up off the ground. Then I would have laughed at her. Because it would have been funny. You know that's how we do, right? Amen. And the wrong with seeing so having some joy. We have joy in our belly. You know, it's all right to have joy in your belly. You know, laugh to kill a lot of devils. I'm going to help you all today. When you can laugh, uh, it, even if you can laugh at yourself, because some, some, some of the silly stuff you done did over the years, if you've done some of that, you get that, uh, that, that joy in your belly will bring about a breakthrough. Amen? Let us, a uh, uh, couple of notes before we close. Uh, remember, uh, what Sunday? Yeah, y'all know that now. How y'all know? Y'all know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I, 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 I really want to do this for y'all, right? So, uh, of course, uh, these will be made to order with restriction. So you need to come first, sir, first. Don't show up at 9:50 and think you're gonna get an omelet. You'll be lucky to get a, you'll be lucky to get a cup of coffee. I'm just helping y'all today. You need to be. Yeah, you need to. I'm gonna start. I'm. A, I'm. Huh. 
the taste of Splendor, like I'm taking off. So y'all, but I, I will be here starting at 830. So if you get, the earlier you get here, the earlier you'll get your omelet. Amen. So that, is, and that's okay. So y'all enjoy yourself. Huh? And oh, I'm stopping at 930. Because it take, it, the last order got to get in at 930. So if you, Danielle, you be out of gas. I'm just helping you. Don't call in. Try to put one on the side. It ain't happening. Them, them grits and eggs, you better stop to make the Burger King or something because you ain't catching me out there. Because I need to transition from, from cook to pastor, to priest, quickly. And then also, um, just a reminder, track has started. Indoor season has started. Amen. So we have practices on Mondays and Fridays at Central High School right there in the city. Yes. Uh, you can get a copy of the paperwork from Kiara. She always got a copy on the computer. Yep, we need the potatoes. Yeah. Oh, we got a whole bunch of potatoes. Yeah, come on. And another announcement from the Jayhawks. They won. Hold on. It's not 10 30 to what? 10 30, 11 30, 12, at least 12 30. Give two hours, okay? So please make sure your name is on the list because if they don't have children, they're not going to do it. What's the age limit? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So teenagers or kids? Yeah, the teenagers are going to help. So this is a time you can, you know, go shopping or just have, get some things done in the house. Lydia and women, no, we probably won't. Okay, I'll give me more time I, I think about that. Okay, but get the children here. See Mother Crawford. Let them know. Uh, or text, please text them. They need to know by tomorrow so they can be prepared because they got to have food and all of that. Okay? Okay, uh, my tent pastor, Adam, a, uh, a, te a, a email. And if anybody else is interested... Um, because I work for uh, KU, we get the 40% off discount or 50% off discount each year with a, di with, are we also on the camera? Oh, well, it has to be an Adidas store in the U.S. So it's friends and family. Um, amen. So if you are interested and you are wanting to use it, I sent it to Pastor Adam. Make sure he or me has your email address, we can forward it to you. It's a good chance to save. Um, this weekend will be the 40% off, um, and it's all weekend, Friday to Sunday. Thursday Thursday through um, Sunday. Uh, there's one at the Legends uh, up at, um, by the, yeah, the Legends Raceway. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then... Uh, and then we can keep your email address, Pastor Adam, and in a couple of weeks, we probably will have the 50% off right after Christmas, okay? That's when Danielle going to shop. That's how she roll. That's my daughter. All ready? Any other announcements? As soon as I have to pass out and pray, um, those that want to stay in here, we're gonna con I'm going to continue to worship. So if you still want to just stay in and sit in and worship, you can do so. Amen. That's somebody who fasts and clearly. That's how she do. Amen. This will teach you something too. When you fast and don't go home, stay in the glory. Amen. Let us close in this prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for each and every one of us. Everybody here under the sound of your voice. We thank you, God, for you being you. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for the ministry gifts. We thank you for uh, the, everything that you've given to the body of Christ to strengthen the body of Christ. God, use all nine gifts through us. God, and we bless you in advance. We thank you for the working of all the gifts in each and every one of us. 
We thank you for the teaching of the day, God. We thank you for Brother Holy Seymour. Spirit. We thank you for Brother uh, Seymour who started the Azusa revival on your behalf so that the fire of God can spread. God, let us have revival in Kansas City again. Let it start right here at Glory Bar Fellowship. And we thank you in advance. God, we love you. We thank you. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. The way that people know that we're in your family is that we love our neighbor even more than we love ourselves. And God, we promise to show that love in everything we do. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.